America's President Donald Trump believes torture works. He's pledged to keep the Guantanamo detention facility open and has said he'll bring back waterboarding of suspects. So in the first of a special two-part investigation, we've been to the US state that was once at the heart of America's illegal program of rendition and torture to ask whether the US could be about to re-enter a dark chapter in the nation's history. Smithfield, North Carolina. A quiet backwater in America's South. On the face of it, an unremarkable Bible Belt town tucked amid rural wooded countryside. But 13 years ago, stories started to emerge, suggesting something sinister was going on. Mysterious flights were leaving from the local airport. People were being seized from their homes and streets around the world, transported to foreign prisons and secret CIA interrogation camps known as black sites. Uh, geführt zum Flugzeug auf dem Boden geworfen und dann betäubt mit einer Spritze betrogen. Dann war ich weg. The covert operation, officially called Extraordinary Rendition, took place in the years between 2002 to 2009. In North Carolina, locals began calling the flights from their local airports torture taxis. This was a planned, orchestrated program of kidnapping for torture. I found that to be just intolerable. We spoke to a woman whose husband was another victim of rendition. To this day, the truth about the CIA's rendition program and the role of North Carolina's airports remains officially shrouded in secrecy. Good afternoon. Tony Curiosity, what are you filming tonight? So we're from Al Jazeera Television. We're making a program about CIA rendition. Hiya. And investigations aren't welcome. I'm sorry, why are you taking these photos? Uh, no comment. Nor are questions. Hello. I mean, he's going to call the police if you guys don't leave. He's going to call the police? Yeah, he's not interested in an interview at this time. 9-11, the deadliest attack ever on American soil. The mass murder of nearly 3,000 people. A defining moment in American history, which was to leave a toxic legacy. In its wake, the US launched a global war on terror including a covert program of kidnap and torture. The Secretary of State at the time was General Colin Powell. His chief of staff was Colonel Larry Wilkerson. Today, he says that operation was a terrible mistake. It's still doing irreparable damage to the United States' moral position in the world as the leader of human rights and human dignity and rule of law and so forth. We no longer are seen as the leader indeed by more than two billion people in the world, according to polls, we're considered the number one threat to their future. Alison Kaysen lives near Johnston Regional Airport, one of the two North Carolina airports used for so-called rendition flights. She took me there. So if you will look down there, that's Aero Contractors. Aero contractors are a local firm that supplied planes for the secret CIA program. In the years following 2005, Alison and her friends began to investigate Aero contractors. She realized that some of the people involved with the company were people she knew. One was an attorney, um, two of them had children the same age as my boys, and 
Yeah, it was shocking, right? Because they they were prominent members of the community, so they put themselves out there as being, you know, a, a high standard of morality. It took real courage for these local women and their supporters to investigate and to confront what was being done in their state. But confront it, they did. You see that we're contacting them here to ask them to come out and meet with us, which they did not do. No, we'll wait. Thank you. Thank you. U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee figures suggest 119 individuals were held by the CIA, nearly a quarter of whom were later found to be improperly detained, though much of the program and the possibly many hundreds more seized remains unknown. But what's clear? Aero contractors played a central role, transporting 49 individuals for interrogation. On the other side of the world, in London, academics at Westminster University have pieced together how the programme worked. Aero contractors maintained and operated two aircraft in particular, which were central to the war on terror and the torture programme. The evidence is absolutely incontrovertible that the torture programme took place, that it violated domestic and international law at many, many points, and that North Carolina and Aero contractors was central to that programme. We travelled to Graz in Austria to meet Khalid El Masri. In late 2003, he was arrested on holiday at the Macedonian border. He was then taken to a small hotel room where an official accused him of being a member of Al Qaeda. Ich habe ihm gesagt, ich bin nicht von Al Qaeda. Dann ist er wütend aufgestanden und hat er gesagt, sie sind nicht kooperativ. Wenn sie sich anderes überlegt haben, sagen sie dem Wächter. Khalid was telling the truth. He was not a member of Al-Qaeda. Shockingly, this was a case of mistaken identity. But there came worse. He was handed over to US agents and bundled onto an aero contractor's plane. Und dann haben die die vom Augen weg gemacht. Ich könnte nur ganz kurz so zehn, vielleicht sieben, acht Männer und schwarz, alle in äh, maskiert. Und jemand hat fotografiert. Unknown to him, his destination was a site in Afghanistan used for CIA interrogation, one of a network of foreign prisons and secret so-called CIA black sites. Places where suspected terrorists, many of whom turned out to be innocent, were systematically tortured in a brutal bid to gain intelligence. This man was a career CIA operative. His name is Glenn Paul. He vividly remembers his first impression of one CIA interrogation camp in an unnamed country. Inside, it is uh, immediately pitch black, uh, as black as any darkness you have ever experienced. Uh, you cannot... Um, you, you, you could not see your fingers here in front of you. Absolute darkness. Uh, and disorienting and deafening uh, sounds. A brutal regime designed to undermine prisoners' sense of self and induce helpless dependence. We think, unconsciously, that uh, the sun will rise once a day and, and then set at the end of the day. That's one of the defining, unthought of realities of life. Not if you're in the hands of the CIA. We can make the sun shine or not. When he'd been assigned to interrogate a captured prisoner, he'd been left in no doubt what he was expected to do. So the instructions were, you will do whatever it takes to get him to talk. Do you understand? And then it was, pressure him, pressure him. That was the word frequently used, pressure him. Turn up the pressure on him. 
um, be creative. And I was literally, literally stunned. I responded, we don't do that. He said, well, we do now. My thought was, pardon me for this, my thought, it, it, these are, this is very clear in my mind. My thought was, uh, holy shit, this is clearly one of the critical moments in the history of the United States. We're talking about torturing, and that is illegal. And uh, I wouldn't do it. Declassified documents, prisoners' accounts and reports outline a regime of abuse euphemistically known as enhanced interrogation, subsequently denounced as torture. Techniques included waterboarding, simulated drowning, wall slamming, sleep deprivation, extreme stress positions, and sexual and psychological abuse. The worst thing is that man is demigrated, so nackt ausgezogen or with windeln and um the man so psychisch fertig zu machen. Dann war wir für mich in der letzten Zeit alles gleichgültig, egal wie es kommt. Ich habe den Hungerstreik 37 Tage gemacht. Dann haben die mich aus der Zelle gebracht, haben mich festgehalten und ich lauch durch die Nase in den Magen geführt und hat irgendwelche Flüssigkeit reingeleert. Und da hat er gesagt, so können wir das jedes Mal so machen. Khaled El Masri was held without any explanation. The CIA realized very soon that they'd got the wrong man. But it took more than four months before he was released. They put him on a plane to Albania, drove him to a remote location, and then dumped him. And then I found myself in a wald, also in the night, verlassen Ort, kein Mensch. Haben die mir meine Sachen gegeben und haben gesagt, du gehst in den Wald hier geradeaus. Today he is free, but still paying the price, suffering severe psychological trauma. And whilst Macedonia has apologized for its role in his rendition, he's received no apology from the US. He's now mounting the latest in a series of legal cases against the US administration. Selbst geschehen ist, ich wünsche, ich wünsche es keinem. Das kann mit mir sich noch mal wiederholen oder mit jemand anderen. Back in North Carolina, campaigners are determined that no victim of rendition is forgotten. Italian citizen Abu El Qasim Brittel was seized in Pakistan in 2002 and rendered on an aero flight to Morocco, where he was subjected to horrendous abuse before being freed a full nine years later. Today, his wife Khadija Anna speaks on his behalf. The trauma of his experience has left him unable to relive his ordeal. In tutta questa questi mesi che lui aveva passato era stato anche molto minacciato era stato minacciato anche eh, rispetto a tutte le donne della sua famiglia, a me, la mamma, le sue sorelle dicevano sono da sole, mi capiterà qualcosa, vedrai se tu non ci dici tutto quello che sai e il problema era che mio marito non aveva nessun segreto particolare da, da raccontare, cioè non aveva quello che loro volevano. In 2014, after years of investigation, the US Senate Intelligence Committee compiled a report into CIA torture. But those who hoped America was finally going to tell the full story about this period were to be disappointed. All that was made public, this heavily redacted executive summary, the entire report, over 6,000 pages, to this day remains secret. We ought to want to see those 6,000 pages of the full report, because if the executive summary is any indication, that report does two astounding things categorically. It says torture doesn't work, and it says we tortured, and we tortured extensively. We even murdered people, the ultimate torture. That report should have come out, and the main reason it didn't come out is a North Carolinian by the name of Richard Burr, who is chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, prevented that report from being read by the American people. 
And as far as I'm concerned, that's complicit with war crimes. Really? Complicit with war crimes? Yes, because what's reported in that report were war crimes. Senator Burr declined our request for a comment. Earlier this year, Senator Burr, a Republican, also chaired the confirmation hearing for President Donald Trump's controversial nominee as the new head of the CIA, Gina Haspel. Gina Haspel's confirmation hearings here back in May reignited controversy over the CIA's post-9-11 torture program, not least her own record, heading a detention facility in Thailand in 2002 where a detainee was waterboarded. Do you believe in hindsight that those techniques were immoral? Senator, what I believe sitting here today is that I support the higher moral standard we have decided to hold ourselves to. Can you please to. answer the question? Senator, I, I think I've answered the question. No, you've not. As you know, I'm a strong supporter of your nomination to be director of the Central Intelligence Agency. You may, in fact, be the most qualified nominee ever nominated for this role. Hearings now are joining. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gina Haspel's appointment was approved. Colonel Steve Kleinman was a career military intelligence officer. He's recognized as a leading expert on the interrogation of terror suspects. The message we send in the world that some years of all the torture has been rewarded again with the most, arguably one of the most prestigious, if not the most prestigious position in our intelligence community. I mean, how, how can we, sending our CIA director who's involved with torture to work with, with a, a senior intelligence official from another part of the world where torture is common, and for, for her to ever try to chastise them, to try to get them a different way, well, they'll say, well, you did it. Yes, but she says she's, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't let the CIA do it again. I mean, surely that's enough, yeah. isn't it? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't believe her. The critics asked, what would she do if Donald Trump was to order the CIA to reintroduce torture? They said, what do you think of waterboarding? I said, I think we absolutely need it. We should have it. And if we can, we should have worse. I'm no doubt Donald Trump would get her out of the way post haste if she objected and put someone in there who wouldn't object. The hard fact is that during his election campaign, President Trump faced down Obama-era opposition to torture. Torture works, OK, folks? Torture, you know, I have these guys. Torture doesn't work. Believe me, it works, OK? And waterboarding is your minor form. Some people say it's not actually torture. Let's assume it is. But they asked me the question, what do you think of waterboarding? Absolutely fine. But we should go much stronger than waterboarding. That's the way I feel. Mark Fallon has more than 30 years' experience as a special agent with the NCIS, the U.S. Naval Criminal Investigative Service. He's investigated some of the most significant terrorist operations in U.S. history. He's wrong. Well, he, he, torture does work. For what? If you want propaganda, if, 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 I want to tell, if I want to get you to tell me something that I want to hear, I can get out of you, torture you. What it's in effect about is getting the truth. Torture as a tactic is not only ineffective, it's counterproductive and it's dangerous. It costs lives. Most experts we spoke to agreed. As a means of getting accurate intelligence, torture simply doesn't work. Victims will say anything to stop the torture, including false confessions and fabrications. If you look through the history of torture, it was used for one thing and one thing only, political or religious oppression, to intimidate, to threaten, to keep people in line. The White House declined to comment on President Trump's endorsement of torture. The CIA declined to respond to questions about Gina Haspel's suitability for her CIA role and referred us to her confirmation hearings, where she said, I would not support the use of enhanced interrogation techniques. When asked what she'd do if the president gave her a direct order to waterboard a terrorist suspect, she said, I do not believe the president would ask me to do that. Mm -hmm. 
In September 2018, North Carolina's campaigners launched a major report on their state's role in facilitating the CIA's torture program. It was the culmination of 18 months of detailed investigation, public hearings, and the contribution of dozens of expert witnesses, including the former UN rapporteur on torture and a former Guantanamo detainee, Mohamedou Slahi. The report was a devastating indictment, calling on the state governor, local authorities and politicians to finally take a stand against torture. We send the message loudly and clearly. Under no uncertain circumstances will we tolerate the inhumane treatment of other human beings. It also called for an investigation into the North Carolina company, Aero Contractors. Are they participating in the illegal kidnapping and disappearance of prisoners overseas? We have no idea. And they certainly could do it again if a future U.S. administration reintroduced this program. We wanted to ask aero contractors about their business today, offering what they call specialized passenger and cargo transportation solutions to customers around the globe. We wrote to three former pilots and even called on them, but no one would speak. I'm sorry, he is not here. Could, could we talk to him? Not there. We also contacted Aero Contractors Management, who didn't reply. So we called on lawyer Lamar Armstrong, listed for many years as a senior management representative of Aero Contractors. We wanted to get his reaction to the revelations in the North Carolina report into torture and the stated role of Aero. We sent an email to Mr. Armstrong. Mr. Lamar Armstrong, representative of Aero Contractors. Thank you very much. Thanks. He wants y'all to leave. Why is he not interested? Because he's just not. I mean, he's going to call the police if you guys don't leave. He doesn't want to talk about the aircraft operated by Aero Contractors that played a central role in the CIA torture program. A 737 Boeing business jet originally numbered N313 P. Call the police if y'all don't leave. Oh, here's the police. Mm. Hi, my name's Sarah Spillett from Al Jazeera Television. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and talk with these folks and, and see exactly what they're, what they're saying, okay? okay? Okay. So, Mr. Armstrong threatened to call the police when we asked him for an interview as a representative of Aero Contractors. And indeed, he has called the police. Not just one car, two cars have arrived. Yeah, no, thank you. Good to meet you. Thank you. Bye-bye. That same day, at the courthouse in Smithfield, North Carolina, campaigners distributed copies of their report to local elected county commissioners. Over the years, campaigners have implored these commissioners to investigate activities at the local airport. A respected local minister tried to ask a simple question about what campaigners say is North Carolina's complicity in torture. We're here tonight to ask you, Smithfield County Commissioners, can you say with us, we are wrong? Anybody? Think about it. Okay, thank you. In the face of silence, we put our questions. We're making a film about the secret CIA rendition program. Do commissioners believe that torture is morally acceptable. I know you've spoken about this, Mr. Williams, haven't you, in the past? I didn't say anything about torture being acceptable. I said I didn't think there was anything illegal going out on out of our airport. So I asked the chairman. Do you believe torture is morally acceptable? I'm not here for question and answers. If you no, want to no, give no, us your no, opinion, no, I'll be glad to listen I, to I, I'm not no, giving you an opinion. I'm just asking you a question. Do you think that torture is morally acceptable? I'm not. Is there anything else, anybody else wish to speak or address this board with pertaining to uh, Johnston County business? Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Move to adjourn. Despite the deafening silence here, the demands for the truth about the CIA program about torture continue. In the next part of this investigation, we visit Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, 
the notorious US naval base US President Trump has vowed to keep open. We investigate claims that secrecy about past torture is impeding the quest for justice after 9-11. And we travel to Morocco to meet the family of a Guantanamo prisoner cleared for release, but like others still incarcerated by the US administration. And we ask what the future holds under President Donald J. Trump. You have President Trump, who is enamored with torture, who has a thirst for brutality. Uh, I'm afraid that we're setting the conditions to return back to practices of brutality and state-sponsored torture as we did have done in the past.